So the table above lists the length to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measurement of 24 is an error. Of the mean, median, and range values listed, which will change the most if a 24 inch measurement is removed from the data? Okay, so this is a bit of a conceptual question. Um, basically, the answer is the range, okay? I'll just give that up right away because um, to get the range, you have to subtract the largest and the smallest. So the range initially was 16. Now it's going to be 16 minus 8, which is equal to 8. So it changes very dramatically. The change is 8 units, okay? Um, that is a dramatic change. If you compare to the median, the median is the middle number. So it looks like 12 is going to be the middle number regardless of whether you eliminate the 24 or not. So that's out. And then the mean, well, the average is going to change slightly from this uh, eliminating of the largest number, but it's not going to change that much, right? Now, if this was, let's say, 100,000, then that would change the average quite a bit. Um, okay. On to 15. Uh, okay, so the graph above displays the cost in dollars of renting a boat for eight hours. What does the C represent in the graph? Okay, let's see. So, uh, well, C is the total cost in dollars, right? Because that's the label of the y-axis. So it's the total cost. Uh, let's see, total number of hours, no. Initial cost, no. Oh, sorry, C intercept. C intercept, I misread it. C intercept, yeah. So the C intercept would be the initial cost, right? The initial cost. So it's the, the Y intercept is also also known as the starting point, or when the time is zero, what would be the cost? So A is the best choice here. Uh, which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? Okay, so we here we need a linear relationship. C equals. Um, so we need a Y intercept. So the Y intercept is looking like plus five. So mx plus b form, right? Um, we know it's going to have a plus 5, so this looks good, this looks good, these are out. Now we just have to determine the slope, so we have to do a change in y over change in x, so let's use these two points. So the change in y, it goes from 5 to 8, so that's a change in y of 3, and the change in x, it goes over 1, so the slope would be 3, that's answer choice C. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x is the value of f of x at its minimum? Okay, so we're looking for a minimum of the function, so that looks like it's going to be here. So this is the corresponding x value, which is negative 1, 2, 3. That's answer choice b. Right. In the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between a and b must be true? So what we can do is we could plug in 0, 0. Okay, 0 greater than 0 plus b. So from the first line, we would ascertain that 0 is less than a. And from the second line, we would ascertain that 0 is greater than b. Um, so 0 is less than a and 0 is greater than b. So if we were to put 0 on a number line, uh, a would go on this side and b would go on that side. Okay, so if in fact we can ascertain from that that b would be less than a via the transitive property. And so therefore if we pancake that we'd get a is greater than b and that's choice a. A food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for two, alright, so this is going to be a system of equations. So we'll use x and y. x will be for salads. Actually, you may as well use s and d. s for salads, d for drinks. So it's 650 per drink. So that's times the number of drinks. Sorry, that's per salad times the number of salads plus two dollars per drink times the number of drinks. Uh, the revenue is 836.50. So notice that uh, 650 is how many dollars it costs for one salad times S salads will give you the revenue made off of the salads. And this gives you the revenue made off of the drinks. This is the total revenue made. So there's our equation. Now we need another equation since we have two unknowns. 
So the other information is that we sold a total of 209 items. So if we add the items together, how many salads plus how many drinks, we end up with 209 total items. So that's a system of equations, and now we're trying to solve for s, is the idea. So let's see. We can get rid of d if we double the bottom line. So if we multiply through by negative 2, we'll end up with negative 2s minus 2d equals negative 418. And then we bring in the other equation, so 6.50s plus 2d equals 836.50. Now with these two equations, if we stack and solve, we subtract, well, really combined uh, each quantity. So here we would get uh, 4.5s, and here we could use our calculator if we need to, but we probably don't. So $18 and a four in front. Now, here's a good chance to use our calculator. We divide this by 4.5. So, <clears throat> so we do 418 divided by 4.5. Um, and we get 92, so it's about 93. And I left out the 50 cents, that's why it's not perfectly accurate, okay. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount. So whenever we see 20% off, we should think multipliers. So to get 20% off, we start with 100%, and we subtract 20%, that gives 80%. We move the decimal twice to the left, and that gives 0.8 as our multiplier. Okay. Uh, the total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including a 8% sales tax. So that is an 8% increase, so it's quite the opposite. Instead of subtracting, we would add 8%. We get 108%. We move the decimal twice to the left. We get 1.08 as our second multiplier. This is for the tax. This is for the discount. Okay. Which of the following represents the original price? Okay. So to use the multipliers, we need a formula. We do the original, original price uh, times the multiplier. In this case, we have two multipliers. Uh, so we'll put both of them, and that's going to equal the final price, okay? So now, if you notice, we're looking for the original. We know both multipliers and the final. So we just put them in. So we have, this can be x, here we'll put 0.8, here we'll put 1.08, and here we'll have the final price, which is p dollars. And we want to find x, so we have to divide. Divide by 0.8 and also 1.08. Do that to both sides, and these will cancel, and we're left with x equals p over 0.8 times 1.08, which is answer choice D.